So, uh, do you ever feel gassy on game night? Well, this game, Farts and Fairies, has you covered. Can you out fart your friends in the survival of the fartest? Let's see if this party game is more than just one big fart joke. Let's go. To be the survivor of the fartest, you want to manage your hand of cards to make sure you have the least amount of farts in front of you represented by these gross looking fart cards. And then of course, you're farting in your friend's faces with farts from your hand. Yep, passing gas is the key thing going on. So every turn, you draw a card, then play one card from your hand, like the obvious, farting. There's a lot of farting, and you'll want to get it out of your hand because you get penalized for it late game, so fart away. But be careful, because when you launch a fart attack, your opponents can respond using all of these green survival cards to defend against the stench. And then you can play a card in response to their card. So then the fart can keep bouncing around in this duel, and then wherever the fart lands, it'll stay in front of that player. Or instead of farting at someone for your turn, you can play one of these blue cards that let you do actions, like eating some beans to get a new hand. Then, when the deck runs out and everyone has their last turn, whoever has the least fart value in front of them, combined with any value in their hand, wins the game. They just have the cleanest air quality and can... breathe the best. That's the bare bones of this game, we'll get to the fairy part of this farts and fairies in a bit. So now on to the review, breaking down the tiny fart particles of this party game. To blast off the pros, the components are all good. You got this nice insert for all the cards, and then the cards, man, these feel amazing in the hand. Not only do all the colors pop super well, but the cards are slippery with just the right amount to keep this gassy game barreling forward. And of course, every single card has this cute cartoony style, but the fun is only just beginning with this. There's a lot of, well, let's just call them stinky dad jokes in this game. And yeah, while they are cheesy, they actually end up working well to get you into this mindset of this ridiculous party game. Okay, here's one. The Queen of Farts. <laughs> or how about this one? Ugh, who cut the fartist in cheese with the Grim Reeker? Okay, okay, but then the heavy hitter with some stinky philosophy I stink, therefore I am, with your man, Rene Desfardis. Really, these are just unrelenting, but they never take up the key part of the card, so they're there if you want to laugh at them. Really, all these quick jokes on these easy to handle cards just get you eager to start playing the game and farting away. And to do this, it's super easy. All you're doing is two things. You draw a card, and then you play a card. If you don't want to play a card, well, you can just draw another card, which means you draw two cards in one turn. So it may look like with all the simple cards that this game has very little thinking, but actually this game has quite a bit of hand management going on, or as we might want to call in this game, fart management. See, look, you're going to be a little nervous about these nasty farts just sitting in your hand. You got to let them go before the game ends or else they'll become your problems. The only way to get rid of them is to play them on your turn. So what are you waiting for? Don't be shy, just blast away. But what could be making you a little shy are your opponent's survival cards, which summon a gust of wind to blow the farts right back at ya. Or it makes your friend a superhuman ninja to deflect the fart to anyone, including you. But you can play another deflect to counter their deflect, and then they can play another deflect to counter your deflect. And so on and so on, until the fart lands on someone, and it could definitely be you who just launched the fart. This will make you think twice about playing farts on just whoever, because what if they deflect it back to you? But at the same time, you want to stock up on these survival cards to push back farts to people, or even to just use defensively if they try to fart at you. In this farting frenzy, survival cards are worth their weight in gold. You need these cards, but a lot can just get dropped on one turn as you wave a single fart around. Is arguing over one fart worth it if you empty your hand? Sometimes you may just want to shrug and take up a little princess fart. Come on, that's barely stinky at all at just one. Couple this fart management with all the different categories of cards and it can give you some stuff to marinate on. There's a steal to blindly snag cards from an opponent, but make sure you don't grab one of their farts. Then there's beans to munch on and reset your hands, or the crazy crazy hand swap. 
Yep, you can swap your hand with someone, which lets you set up some pretty strong plays. If you got a bunch of ugly, ugly farts in your hand, well, just give it to an opponent with your swap card near the end of the game, and then they don't have enough time to fart out all those cards. Then, how about interacting with cards in front of people? There's the Fart Atomic Bomb, which will move a fart in front of you to any of your opponents. Or there's passives you can play, like locking someone in the bathroom to skip their turn, or using the trick of wearing a helmet to save your nostrils from stench temporarily. As the game says, Houston, we now have protection. So with those cards, the game can seem like a game of just aggressive farting and posturing. But then come in the fairies. These are going to give you some negation power. Let's start with the fart police that can cancel any card in the game. People trying to swap cards with you, people trying to fart atomic bomb you, or even just plain old ordinary farts. This guy is really strong, so make sure you save him until something really crazy comes along. And then we got my favorite childhood moneymaker, the Toot Fairy. Okay, that one actually made me crack up a bit. <sighs> The Toot Fairy adds a ridiculous amount of nuance because it can be played as literally any other card. Any other card. That's some crazy variety of choice. Oh, and you see that 5 on the top? That means you can also play it as a 5 strength fart on someone else. So despite the simple turns and goofy theme, this game is far from brain dead. The Toot Fairy could be a hand swap to swap your hand a fart to someone else. You're always looking at the farts in front of other people to see who's winning, and then if you can play a fart on them if they're going to deflect it. And if they deflect it, well, maybe you can use your own deflect on their deflect. Instead of just chucking farts left and right, you're actually being measured on how you want to direct your gas in this game for the perfect, ah, oh, the perfect timing. Or how about drawing cards? It may look like having more cards is better for more defensive options, but then if you're drawing farts, that's actually worse than not drawing anything. So you may want to think twice about just blindly drawing from the deck in case you get some poop colored cards. And not only may you be laughing about the possibility of managing farts with your friends, but you'll also be constantly interacting with them. Just playing a fart alone requires you to target someone, so there's always some simple politicking that can happen. You can say, oh, no, 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 he's far less stinky than me right now. Why are you playing a fart on me? Uh, you know what? I, I actually, I have so many farts in my hand that I'm not going to fart on you for the next two turns if you don't fart on me right now. And that leads us to the mind games you can play with the cards in your hand. You may have a bunch of defensive cards hidden in your hand, and then you can choose not to play them and pretend that you don't have any means to defend yourself from farts. Then, when suddenly some guy yells, Oh, Merry Christmas for a big one, ho ho ho! You say, Nah, I got the fart police to clean that up. And just like an urge to pass gas, this game will eventually come to an end. The game ends when the deck runs out, but you're drawing from this every single turn, so this game will never drag, making it very true to its listed 20 minutes. In every single player count, you're starting with 8 cards from the deck, so in bigger groups, you'll deck out a little faster. This goes really well with the craziness of laughing, more politics with more people, so it'll still be around 20 minutes. Lastly, if this wasn't already obvious with the butt blasting mechanics, this game is 100% worthy of being called Farts and Fairies. Just like rocking from side to side after a gassy meal, you can feel the tension of farts accumulating in your hand and you really need to let them out before the game ends. When your friend is most vulnerable, just let out your stinkiest fart and have them suffer. Which a lot of people can relate to. Like in college especially, like, I don't know, we ate the same thing, I don't know why his smells so bad. Many of the cards just fit in a very goofy realistic way, like a dude wearing a helmet to escape farts, or eating beans to recharge your hand of farts. And then of course, the legendary Toot Fairy can grant you a wish, and be anything, even be the ugliest fart possible. And when you lose this game, you really do stink. Like, no, like you really do stink. You have a bunch of fart cards blasted at you. Like you're smelling that, it's gross. So now it's time for the cons of farts and fairies. What actually stinks, like actually stinks about this game? And we actually only found one thing, the rule book. See, this guy is pretty easy to follow and even has explanations for the action cards and a fact. 
It just is a victim to its own simplicity right now. We wish there was at least some sort of gameplay example given for the fart survival dueling, since it is the main conflict of the game. Plus, the fart police needs a little more clarification in what it means by all cards in play, because it could lead some to think that it discards already banked farts. No, 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 my smelly friend. When a fart is banked in front of you, it's there to stay. There's also an annoyance that there's no tiebreaker rule in this game, but since this is a party game, that's probably not a big deal for most people. Maybe a tiebreaker would be, if you're tied for farts, whoever has the least value of farts on the board in front of them wins the game. The good news is that there's an animated video tutorial on their website, with an Australian narrator talking about farts. How great is that? So honestly, you should just start there and then use the rulebook for referencing later. Now it's time for the nitpicks. Let's go back to the Toot Fairy, which can be played as any other card in the game. This is really fun design that jumps your possibilities by an insane amount. But also, it's kind of intimidating for newcomers because they don't know all the possible cards in the game. This isn't a big deal in this party game because you can always play it as a 5 strength fart, which is really good, or you can use it to copy any card in your hand, so you can just use that as reference. We would like to see a player aid that explains all the cards a Toot Fairy could copy for newcomers. However, we can also see why a player aid wasn't included to not overwhelm newcomers, so that's why this is ultimately a nitpick. The next nitpick is replayability. This is a very simple and short game, and you're going to see all the cards in every single playthrough. Your opening hand will always be different, and there's slightly different ways to maximize your opponent's smelliness and minimize yours, but there's no different starting board or special player powers you can play around with. The game's components are just this deck of cards. That's it. So to help with this, you can get the Not Safe for Work expansion, which adds a small deck of cards that will add some mechanics to the game. You can freshen up the farts in front of you, take cards from the discard, and there's even this hairy godmother, which really hurts you if you top deck it. We actually don't like this design because it's just huge RNG that if you get it, you have to reveal it, and it's so punishing you basically just lose the game. It makes this game even more casual feeling, and without that card, Farts and Fairies actually has plenty of fun maneuvering you can do to help you win. So if you want more Farts and Fairies and you're playing with adults, this might be the pickup to get, but it's definitely, definitely not necessary to enjoy this game. So now it's time for the recommender score, where we try to critically evaluate the pros and cons. Farts and Fairies is going to get a 7 out of 10. It's good. This is one big fart joke. But that doesn't mean the gameplay stinks. Okay, actually, it does kind of stink because you are farting in each other's faces. But okay, okay, you get the point. For a party game about farting, this has gameplay that's actually pretty solid. Also, this could fall under the realm of filler card games because it doesn't require a lot of people to work well. Really, there's some nuance on how you want to play cards, how you want to draw them, how you want to mind game, how you want to respond on your opponent's turn. But remember, this is still a game called Farts and Fairies. And this is a party game that can be played by basically anyone. Bookkeeping, none of it. Punishing, no, not at all. Even if you're behind, you can just fart on the guy who's winning, or you can organize some weird politics or a crazy combo with the swap card. Sure, there are luck elements, like you could top deck Da Vinci Da Fartist on the last turn and lose the game. Fartist. But with the theme and playtime, are you gonna get upset about losing a game on farts in 20 minutes? For the most part, you have some big thinking possibility too, like which of the other 10 cards do you want the Toot Fairy to be? The game doesn't ever slow down because it's so simple, and if you don't have anything to do, well, you can just draw a card, and the game just keeps going on, and the gases just keep swirling and mixing around. The only real upsetting thing right now is the rulebook, so if you do buy this game, make sure you have a web browser on hand to answer the questions that will come up. If you are a smaller party of two players, this game becomes a pure farting duel. There's a lot more mind games and thinking that comes in, but also since there's no politics, you're very victim to luck. The game is serviceable at two players, but if you want the full experience, play with at least three people. We want to point out that while Farts and Fairies does many things well, there is no specific mechanic that is going to blow away those looking for the next highly replayable, ingenious party game. If you turn your nose away at this fart theme, yeah, this game is not for you. 
But for everyone else who likes the idea of playing with farts in a card game, you're not gonna take gameplay that seriously anyways. It's called farts and fairies. Farts and fairies. Like real talk, for those of you who struggle to find people to play with, aren't farts the most relatable thing for us eating and digesting humans? This is an amazing icebreaker. Show it to your friends to see if they have the same sense of humor as you do. Or you could play it with your family to get them started on some actual hand management. You will learn the ways of how to be patient with your toots. Instead of just letting out your nastiest fart right away, be careful with it and let it sit there in your hand for the perfect time to strike. Save your nastiest farts for your friends and all the while you'll be watching their hands as you deflect and fan away their farts. Oh, and don't sniff your own farts because if you keep doing that, you'll lose in this game. My personal score for farts and fairies is gonna be a six out of 10. I have an above average time with it. This has been an absolute delight with family where the farting was just so easy to understand. And the cards are simple that sometimes having eight of them in your hand is not a big deal. I find it quite entertaining weighing the options between whether or not you want to draw or play an action in your hand, because if you draw, then you might draw a fart, and that's hilariously terrible. And it's fun to think about how to use your defensive cards, because once you use them up, then you're vulnerable to getting farted at. And the two fairy that could be any card, man, there's just so much to play around with there. Any card, any single card, the whole I fart in your general direction, though it does get a little old for me after one or two games with the simplicity. So I can really only play this game for a little bit at a time and then the fart jokes will be saved for another playthrough. So yeah, I don't take this too seriously, but it has actual mechanics to keep me engaged and it's farts. It's farts. As always, thanks to our patrons for making videos like this possible. We got John S, Manuel G, Brian C, Clifford H, Aaron W, Max B, Bora, Jeremy M, C, Charlie P, Quinton S, Sam S, Travis R, Alma Y, Von K, Ryan D, Jeffrey L, Brett M, Matt G, Sp Peter Z, Spinner 71, Ryan J, Brad G, Tiamo, Period, Mark A, Nathan Z, James M, and Evan B. And we got three mad lads of cardboard. We got ZL, Jeff L, and John F. And we also got Amy, our mad lady of cardboard. So we got playthroughs with patrons and more behind the scenes stuff in our Patreon link below if you want to check that out. So yeah, thanks for watching till the end of the video. And as always, remember to like and subscribe if you like the content. Probably not fart themed stuff in the future. Probably not. Go ahead and recommend any games you'd like us to review and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.